originally like I wanted to be a chef and I was really interested in like pastries and things. And I had a, a high school teacher say like, oh, you should look into chemical engineering. You're really interested in chemistry. So I was in the nuclear engineering and radiological sciences department. Um, I was in the master's and PhD program. I got a master's in 2015 and my PhD in 2018. I always had this idea of like, how can we like use this uh, science to solve different problems? And that's kind of how I got interested in engineering. And so how did you decide to then turn to nuclear engineering? Yeah. So I did my undergrad at MIT. Um, and so when I went to visit, my host was actually a chemical engineer. And so I talk, started talking to her about like, oh, I'm interested in atoms and I'm interested in antimatter and all of these. And her response was kind of like, well, you know, chemical engineering might not be what you really want to do. Maybe you want to look into nuclear engineering. I ended up trying and I started, you know, when I got to MIT doing that and I ended up really liking it. So once I started learning more about like all the different applications and I was really interested in the nonproliferation aspect and radiation detection and that thing, that's kind of where Michigan came in for grad school because like Michigan is known for their radiation detection expertise. A lot of the things that I work at work on at APL are like I can't talk about them. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As much I'll, as you can. Or yeah. So I'll try to yeah. So APL is in Maryland. Um, it's its own separate uh, entity from Johns Hopkins University, but it's affiliated. I'm in the air and missile defense sector. Um, a lot of my so I still have the title of nuclear engineer. Um, a lot of my work is focused on simulations and radiation effect right now. Um, and I'm also, you know, trying to do some radiation detection work in different avenues. And there's a lot of different sectors within APL. So like I said, I'm an AMDS, but there's like a space sector that I do work in. Um, there's a asymmetric operations sector that also does some um, security and radiation detection work that I'm interested in working on. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So what do you find most exciting about your job? Oh, the most exciting thing I think for me is that there's a plethora of projects to work on. So there's always something new happening. Everything's very timely. So a lot of the things that you work on, you maybe you won't see immediate effects, but you know that there are effects that will come out in the next five, 10 years, something like that. And I like, I also like too that there are aspects of APL that have a, a R&D element. So you can do some more like forward thinking type research. But a lot of the stuff that I find more exciting is like very um, application driven. And then what do you find most tedious about your job? I think because a lot of these projects are like for the government or like the government is a contractor that can sometimes be the most tedious because you have to be very careful and you have to, you know, abide by different contracts and um, there's deadlines that may come out of nowhere. How might you see your work making a difference in society? With what was going on at the time during my PhD program, it was really timely because this was around the time that North Korea was doing a lot of their testing. And so I think whenever you're able to have these technologies, it's kind of an additional deterrent from people doing testing. Um, if they're able, if they're never able to do it in a way where it's secretive, then that can kind of deter them from testing. And so there's always this um, policy aspect of treaty verification and, and that type of work. What are your favorite memories from your time in college? So my favorite times at Michigan, for sure, because like I said, I went to MIT. So Michigan is like really big in sports. And so that was like a fun, like something new that I had never experienced, especially like football season. That was a lot of fun for me, just like seeing how many people come and how big and serious people are. I think my time in college really prepared me for my career because 
especially at Michigan, like you have the opportunity to work on so many things and learn so much from your your uh, lab mates. You learn about what projects they're working on and you just start to build like this wealth of knowledge, even though like you're kind of focused in your one area because you're interacting with your peers. I think it prepared me in that way to kind of have a breadth of knowledge. So now, you know, how do we still thinking of this as an engineer? How do you solve problems? How do you use the knowledge that you've learned and you've gained through your, your programs and apply it to these different problems? And I think that Michigan really helped prepare me for that. What advice would you have for current or prospective students who are going into engineering, especially going into nuclear engineering? I think you have to be very open-minded to be an engineer because I mean, like I said, there's gonna be, there is a million ways to solve problems sometimes, right? And so you have to kind of be open-minded that um, there's not just one solution. There's not just one way to get to a solution. And nuclear engineering is a small field. And I think that if you're if you're interested in that path, you should really, you know, explore all the different avenues that it has because you may come in thinking you want to do X and really when it comes down to it, you want to do Z. And I mean, it's it, they're all fundamentally rooted in the same physics and the same processes. The applications are just different. And so I think that's something that I didn't even realize when I got into the nuclear engineering program. Um, how broad it was. So. so if you were a student now, what would you pay attention to in college knowing what you've been through? You know what, I think I would have done more professional development because I think in engineering you do get really bogged down into the science and technology and sometimes we get so bogged down that we have a hard time communicating those things and so i think i that's why i think and i'm like everyone in my group knew i hated giving talks like i never wanted to do presentations like defense was like the scariest thing ever um but i think in the long run you'll benefit from doing those things and you'll benefit from having the professional development and doing things outside of the classroom because it just makes you a, a more well-rounded person. And did you ever at any point in your undergrad um, like second guess and think about going back to like chemical oh, engineering? <laughs> well I even thought about going back and just not doing engineering at all sometimes because I just I just wasn't prepared to, for that type of academic lifestyle and I had to adjust very quickly um, and that's just everyone has their uh, their own path and their own journey that they have to take right and so for me that journey got me to where I am today um, but I think yeah I mean there were plenty of times where I was like you know maybe I should just go to culinary school like that would probably be a lot, <laughs> a lot different than trying to take this differential equations class or taking this optics class <laughs> that I know nothing about. So, but I mean, yeah, I think too, it's all about you, your goals are always going to motivate you, even in the dark times. So. Dr. Sierra Sybils.